Okay, first and foremost, I want to give all honors and praises and glory belongs to my Lord and Savior, whose name is Yahweh. Bahasham, Yahweh Shai. Bahasham, Wahavakar Kodash. The name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh, and His Son's name is Yahweh Shai, and who I reverence and honors to the elder apostles of great Moses that taught me this truth. And those of you that are in the Holy Spirit and to the hopeful elect across the globe and to the few, the very few brothers and sisters listening and also learning in the hopes of being saved within these last days. And I want to say to Wadi Yahawa, to Wadi Yahawa Yahushai, for allowing me for another day to get out here and to minister before the hopeful elect. All right, so without further ado, we're just going to flow with the spirit and Lord willing, we should be edifying. Because this is what the elect, the hopeful elect were put here to do. Not to be entertainers, not to be father of the year, but to preach this word. So this is Matthew's 1 and 21. And she shall bring forth a son, and I shall call his name Yehabashai. Who is he speaking of? Mary. Okay. Mary to bring forth what a son. And his name would be Yahabashai. He is our deliverer. Okay. And it says, For he shall save his, his people from their sins. So that's what Yahabashai was going to do. He's going to save his people from their sins. Not the whole world, and that would show you that we have what enemies, the other nations are our enemies, right? His people from their sins and from our enemies, all right? And what is sin? We're going to go into what sin is, okay. Beautiful, this is first John. Alright? This is first John. Three and four. Whosoever committed sin transgresseth the law. So when you commit sin, what's that? That's a breaking of the law. Right? For sin is transgression of the law, so it tells us what sin is. It's a breaking, it's a going against what the law. And it says, and you know that he was manifested. Who? Yahabashai. Suffix manifest, it means it's there. It's no. He was present. Okay. And he was manifested. Okay. To take away our sins. Who? You have a shy. He came on a sin. He came on a sin to take away our sins. Okay. And in him is no sin. So when you have a shy, there's no sin. And if you're in you have a shy, there's no sin in you. That's why the scripture says, Bless is that man whose spirit is no God, whom the Lord imputed none iniquity. Okay? And it says, For whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Alright? Whosoever sinneth have not seen him, neither know him. So when it says whoever sinneth, we've sinned. We go off, even our sin is true. So what does it mean, he that sinneth have not known him? Those that don't, all right, those that don't really acknowledge Yahabashai. Okay? Those that don't acknowledge Yahabashai, those that don't accept Yahabashai, they're sinning. Right? They're not forgiven because they don't acknowledge the Son. This is how important it is to acknowledge Yahabashai. I can tell you about the mark of the beast 
but if you don't believe in Yahweh Shai, you, you're, you're going to take it. I can tell you about martial law, but if you don't believe in Yahweh Shai, you're going to you're going to fall victim to what martial law? Yeah, it's all about the belief in Yahweh Shai, and I've got to keep saying that. Men, men are teaching you all algorithms. That's good, but do you have faith in Yahweh Shai? Men are teaching you to fear Esau more than you fear Yahweh Shai. Okay. Huh? I can't hear you. Yeah, I'm live. No, not on YouTube. YouTube. T type in Kingdom of Heaven is at hand. The Kingdom of Heaven is at hand. Alright. And it says, Whoso abideth in him sinneth not. Okay. Whosoever sinneth have not seen him, neither knoweth him. That would be those that were not acknowledging Yahweh Shai. Okay? Their sin would be what imputed unto them. Okay? Little children, let no man deceive you, because we're in a time of what great deception. Let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness, okay, is righteous. As he is righteous, just like Yahweh Shai. He that doeth righteousness is righteous. If you're walking in the ways of Yahweh Shai and he has his mercy bestowed upon you, you're deemed as righteous. It's not just by the law. So we went into that already. There's a lot I'm thinking about. So a lot of people, they got a problem with the Israelite foreigners. But the Israelite foreigners were brought in by Paul because you had Paul going to Jerusalem and you had Jews that were what? Denying Yahweh Shai. Okay? This is Romans. We're going to go to Romans 10 and jump straight to 5. Right? Even so, at this present time, also, there's a remnant according to the election of grace. So that remnant is through the election of grace. And that remnant represents what? Israelite foreigners as well. Okay? And that grace is mercy. And if by, and how is that grace through? It's through Yahweh Shai. The law came through Moses and grace came through Yahweh Shai. Right? And if it be by grace that it is no more of works, Otherwise, grace is no more grace. So it wasn't according to the works of the law. What? It's not according to the works of the law. Instead, it's no more grace. It's according to what? Faith in Yahweh Shai. Okay? Because if it was according to the works of the law, then everyone would just boast. It's according to the mercy that we've been given through Yahweh Shai. Otherwise, the work is no more work. What then Israel have not obtained? Obtain means to hold on to. Okay? That's which he seeketh for. But the election have obtained it. So, you're going to have a remnant of our people. They never obtained what they were seeking for. They were searching. But Yahweh Shai never gave it to them. Right? He gave it to a special group of men and women. Okay? But the election have obtained it. The election have obtained what? The truth, therefore they've obtained. The understanding, therefore have they obtained mercy. Therefore they have obtained Yahweh Shai. Okay? And the rest were blinded. The scripture says the rest of our people, they were blinded. It tells us that in Isaiah 6 and 9. It tells us that in Matthew 13 and 9. He put a dark veil over their eyes so they could not get his truth. That's why you've got to count it a blessing. If you know and if you understand. Because knowing is one thing, but understanding, that's a whole other level. Count it a blessing. Count it a gift.
and it says, according as it is written, the Most High has given them the spirit of slumber. Slumber is a lackadaisical, slow, but retarded. Okay? The spirit of slumber. So Yahabashai, he put that spirit on what our people, the two thirds of the wicked, to have a spirit of slumber. Alright? Eyes that they should not see. So they have eyes, but they cannot see spiritually. They cannot perceive what we're saying. Okay? And ears that they should hear unto this day. Okay? And David saith, let their table be made a snare. And the snare is that trap. So the wicked of our people that pick up this word is a trap. It's a snare. It's an entanglement. It's a jinn. It's supposed to be. And the stumbling block. So this word is a stumbling block. Okay? To those that are not supposed to get it. They were going to be scratching their heads, you know, getting angry because it wasn't given to them. And that's why we have to remain humble. I'm speaking for myself, that's why I have to remain humble. As much as you're saying, well, someone else can't get it, the Lord, as much as he gave it to you, he can take away everything he gave to you. Remember, this is a gift. And Lord willing, Lord willing, Lord Rutter, so I want to do a video, Lord willing, later on, upon the gifts, different gifts brothers have. It says, and a recompense unto them. So this word is a recompense unto the wicked of our people that are not accepted by Yahweh Shai. Let their eyes be darkened that they may not see. Okay? That they may not see what see this truth. See this truth for what it really is. But they may not see and bow down their neck. Back always. I say, have they stumbled that they should fall? The most I forbid, but rather through their fall. Salvation has come unto the Gentiles. So that's where the Gentiles come into play. Salvation has come unto what? The Gentiles should be known as what the Israelite foreigners okay why because you had a remnant of our people that were not in Jerusalem that were not receiving Yahweh Shai so therefore because they were not receiving Yahweh Shai Paul what he said yeah I want to leave Jerusalem I want to go to the Gentiles that have faith Salvation has come unto the Gentiles to provoke. To provoke, to anger. Okay? Because you had Jews in Jerusalem, they were provoked by Paul teaching, and not just Paul others, Israelite foreigners. Provoked them to jealousy, they became jealous. Why are you teaching these um, individuals that are wearing togas? Why are you teaching these individuals that are going to gymnasium, that are uncircumcised? That's how the Jews were looking at those that were scattered in the other regions but they were still Israelites and if they were receiving the word then what's, what was the problem? Okay. and the diminishing of them the riches of the Gentiles the doing away of those that didn't believe was the bringing in of what? the Gentiles how much more are their fullness? for I speak to you Gentiles right? In so much as I'm an apostle of the Gentiles. So, Paul, Apostle Paul, he had a he had a mission. And he was what an apostle sent out to what to teach the Gentiles. To those that were scattered within the other nations. They had the spirit, they had the spirit of Israelites. Right? 
But I speak to you Gentiles. It's how much I am an apostle. Uh, and my apostle means sent out of the Gentiles. I magnify my office. So that's what, exactly what Paul was saying, magnifying his office. Okay. That's exactly what he was doing all across the world. Different what places he was going to. Let's go to, so bear me just a minute. Acts. All right, let's go to, we're just gonna flow with the spirit. And when the Pentecost was fully come, they were all of one accord in one place, right? And suddenly there came a sound from the heaven of a rushing mighty wind. And it threw through the house where they were sitting. A rushing mighty wind. Okay. Which ultimately was the spirit of Yahweh Shai. Okay. And it filled all, all the house where they were sitting. There's a lot of things going on today. This is a fire engine. Yeah. Right? And it filled all the house, right? Where they were sitting. And they had put unto them clothing tongues that caused of a fire. And it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues. So the Spirit was upon him to speak different languages. And that's, that's gonna happen in this time. We're gonna have brothers speaking different languages. They never even knew they could speak. See, that's through the power of Yahweh Shai. All right? And it says, as the Spirit gave them utterance, so the Spirit of Yahweh Shai gave them utterance. Right? Speak in these different languages. And it says, and they were dwelling at Jerusalem. Jews, devout men. So devout men, they were devout to who? Yahweh Shai. Okay. And the devout men were those that were de de devoted previously to what idols? Okay. Out of every nation. So it says, out of every single nation, Jews devout men. That shows you how people are stunned. Okay. Under heaven. Now when this was noise abroad and the multitude came together. Okay. And were confounded. Because that every man had heard Rem speak in his own language. Okay, so you had disciples speaking in all these various different languages. They were amazed. And they were, see that's, and they were all amazed and marveled saying one to another. Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? Hold on a minute, they're from Galilee, they're from Israel. How are they speaking these other languages? And they were all amazed, babies minute, and however you were, we, so, and how hear we every man in our own tongue, their language, where we were born, right? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and dwellers of Mesopotamia, in Mesopotamia, and in Judea and Cappadocia, in Pontus and in Asia. Fire, I don't know if I'm saying it right, Py, Pyragora, Pyphimph, Pamphylia in Egypt and in the parts of Libya about Cyrene the strangers of Rome Jews and proselytes wonderful works of the Most High and they were amazed and were in doubt saying one to another what meaneth this all right others mocking said these men are full of wine so you're always going to have mockers you had some these these are they're drunk now they were speaking in tongues right 
But Peter standing up with the eleven, lifting up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, right? All ye that dwell in, at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words, right? For these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in those last days. Sir, Yahweh Yahweh Shai, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. So that's what's happening in these last days. The spirit is being poured upon all flesh. Okay? For some men to speak in tongues, for some men to prophesy, for some men to preach, for some men to do all types of things. Okay? And it says, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. So it be said in these last days that our daughters and sons, even the women may be prophesying. Even the women may be get what be getting visions. And lately, I don't usually have visions, but I've been getting a lot of visions lately. A lot of the end times, okay, of certain what calamities, all these things. It's all prophecy. And they shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions. So you're even gonna have young men that were seeing visions. Even your sons, you brothers may even have sons that have visions in this truth. All these things we're gonna be seeing in these last days. I've been having a whole bunch of visions. Okay. Of these last days. And your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions. Okay. And your old men shall dream dreams. Even the old men, they shall dream dreams. So we're in that time. Okay. We're certain of our people, they're rising out of what? That slumber state. Certain of our people. And on my servants and on my handmaids, I will pour out in those days. This is future reference. In those days. So in those days is now. Of those days, my spirit. So you're gonna have the hope for that. Then we're not gonna be waiting. What are they waiting for what? The heart full they were going to have that spirit. No, they were not going to be waiting for it. Okay? And I'll pour out my dates, I'll pour out in those days my spirit. And they shall prophesy. So that's what's happening right now. Yahweh's spirit is being poured out. Okay? Right now, for what? Upon his men. And these women. And I will show wonders in heaven above. You see, that's a wonder. Bear me just a minute. A chariot is a wonder. So we were going to be seeing those things very soon. We were going to be seeing what chariot? These different sides. Right? Blood moons, miracles. Which is miracles happening every single day. Even to know, even to know this truth, that's a miracle. To be given an understanding of this truth, that's a miracle. That the level of connect not take for granted. You right? So bear me just a minute. And these things are being done. Okay? In the sight of all to see. Right? And the miracles are done so Yahweh could be glorified. Right? So when Peter and the rest of the disciples, Paul, John, Thomas, Philip, were doing particular things, it was so 
Yahweh could be glorified. We don't do this to glorify ourselves. Let the chief priests, let the Pharisees, we do this so we can glorify. You have a shrine. Okay? That's why we do this. So you have a shrine to be glorified. Okay, just a minute. And where was we? One verse. 19 and signs of the earth beneath blood and fire and vapor of smoke right the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood and this is referring to the last day right before the great and notable day of the Lord Jehovah Shai so this is future what? reference and what the signs and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name whosoever but those of Israel doesn't mean the whole world of the Lord shall be saved verse 22 ye men of Israel hear these words that's who we're speaking to that's who we're out here for the children of Israel Yahabashai of Nazareth, a man approved of the Most High, among you by many miracles. Because when Yahabashai was on the scene, you couldn't deny he was doing many miracles. Right? It was miracle after miracle. Okay? Bear me just a minute. And wonders and signs which did by him in the midst of you as you yourselves also know and by this time he was speaking to what the chief priests and the Pharisees right him being delivered by the determinant council determinant council of who? the wicked so you always have that people that had a council against Yahweh Shai It's always been that way. Okay. But a determinate counsel and for a knowledge of the Most High. You have taken and with wicked hands have crucified and slain. That's why we say Esau is just he's just a sword. Scriptures tell you that in some even Psalms. Esau is just the sword, a weapon stick. But the, if you really want to go in depth, the wickedness really lies within our own people. And that's why you have men just doing videos on Esau. To keep you distracted from the wickedness that is within. Okay? It was our own people that were against Yahweh Shai. And by wicked hands, so wicked hands equates the wicked men have crucified and slain who the Mars have raised up having loosed the pains of death because it was not possible that he should be holding of it why wasn't it possible? because he was perfect so something that's perfect how is that susceptible to corruption? see how shall he triumphed over what? death for David speaking concerning him I foresaw the Lord always before my face. For he is on my right hand, that I should not be moved. Therefore did my heart rejoice, and my tongue was glad. And moreover, all my, my flesh shall rest in hope. So that was a prophecy of what? Solomon prophesying, all right? It's so like a, what David what David prophesied of Solomon, which was Yahabashai, that he'd be in future reference sitting on what the right hand side of the heavenly father and he should not see what corruption why because he was perfect so if you're perfect you don't see corruption all right so bear me just a minute and righteousness brings us what closer to the heavenly father bear me just a minute just like 
men that scoff at the idea of immortality, having new bodies. You, you even got men that don't even go out anymore. Okay, but they're talking about being in the spirit. But what spirit are you in? What spirit are you in? I'm talking about certain men, they don't even go out anymore. They're too scared. Oh, we're not supposed to. Yeah, you are supposed to be out there. Fuck out. Scared of just a minute. Bear me just a minute. I'm just gonna flow. Let's just flow, let's just flow. Let's see if I can find it. Ah! I'm looking for it, but I can't find it right now, baby. Just a minute. Can't find it. But right is the three is what? Mortality. So I've got something. Um, Come to wisdom of Solomon, chapter 6. Hey, ye, O kings, and we're being raised up. This is to the heart of the left, O ye kings, because we're being raised up to be kings in the next world to come, in this next rulership to come. We're being taught the right way how to do things, how to practice judgment, mercy, faith. This is what we're being taught. Oh, you kings, understand. So a king needs understanding. What did Solomon pray for? Oh Lord, would you give me what? Understanding so I can guide this so great a people. Learn. So this is about also learning every single day. Okay. You don't be judges of the ends of the earth because that's what we're being raised up to be. Judges of the end of the earth. Give it ye that rule the people and glory in the multitude of nations. For power is given unto you of the Lord and sovereignty from the highest. Who shall try your works and search out your counsel? That refers to now as well. Even the powers that be are ordained by the Heavenly Father. And he's gonna what? Search out your counsel. Okay, seeing if you're judging rightly. Seeing if you're balanced. Okay. Because being ministers of his kingdom, you have not judged. Alright. Right? Nor kept the law. Go walk up the council of the Most High. This is about following His ways and not not being partial. You still got men there partial. They can correct other camps. They can correct other camps, but they can't correct the men amongst them because they're not true. They're not many true judges. You have you have righteous judges and you have left hand side judges as well. Alright? Hardly and speedily shall he come upon you. Alright? For a sharp judgment shall be to them that are in high places. And it's the ones on the, in high places that are what? Judging. That's why when you're doing that, you've got to do it with balance. You also got to judge the men that are amongst you. Okay? Yes, the men that are in your camp, the men that are amongst you. You also got to judge them as well. Okay, you can't be partial. Just because you know a man, I know him, so what? 
the Lord might have some uh, uh, a problem with him. Verse 6, for mercy will soon pardon the meanest. Okay. But mighty men shall be tormented. For he which is Lord over all shall fear no man's person. You know what? It means to fear no man's person. And remember that was said to Yahabashai when they were asking him about who shall we give tribute to? Remember what they said? We know you're a man that fears no man's person and you judge righteously. So Yahabashai, when he comes back, you're going to say, well, you knew him. You know, you knew this guy. No. Every man's going to be judged individually. Okay. Neither will he stand in awe, in surprise and amazement. Just because you have a rag in this world, he ain't going to stand in awe of you. Neither will he stand in awe, amazement of any man's greatness. No matter how high you are within the society. Okay? For he had made the small and the great. So Yahushua has created the small and the great within the society. The highest thing, the lowest thing. And care for all alike. Both for a sword trial shall come upon the mighty. So that's, that's what I'm saying. That's why the low seat is always important. Because men, you see men that have these high titles, just look at them. Just look at what spirit they're in. And now they're saying, please, don't, don't give us all honours and well, hold. But you took that position. You took that high position. When all you needed to do was just take the low. That was it. So you can't be saying after you got this position, oh, please stop, stop, stop greeting me. Well, that's what you wanted. So you got what you asked for. And it says, right? For they, verse 9, unto you therefore, O kings, I speak, that ye may learn wisdom. So we gotta learn wisdom. And also with that wisdom, we gotta learn balance. And fall not away. For they that keep holy, holiness, holy, shall be judged holy. And they that have learned such things shall find what to answer. Okay? You're going to find what to answer, you're going to be given what the right words. Okay? Wherefore, set your affection upon my words. That's what I love supposed to be upon. You have a shy and his words. That's what our affection is supposed to be on. Okay. Our love, our desire. It's supposed to be on this word. Okay. And it says, and you shall be instructed. A wise man's going to be instructed. Bear with me just a minute. Go to Proverbs. A wise man's going to be instructed. Okay. Proverbs 1, the Proverbs of Solomon, okay, King Solomon, the son of David, King of Israel, right, and it says, to know wisdom, so you've got to know wisdom, to know you're experiencing, okay, and instruction, so what's the main thing, you want instruction? You want to be instructed on what? The right path. Of wisdom. Right? And it's wisdom that instructs us. Okay? Justice, judgment, and equity. Three things. Justice, judgment. That's what Yahushua was teaching these men. He was teaching them judgment, justice, and equity. Equity. You can only have equity means fairness. 